Hello and welcome to Comic Story and Weekly, where we review comic books every week, hence the name. Today it is myself and Andy Roo. Andy Roo, how are you doing today? I'm fantastic, Dan. Thanks for asking. All right. Well, this show is streamed live every Monday at twitch.tv slash comic storian after our podcast formerly known as the Conspiracy Cast. Because no, we still have to re- need to change that name. Yeah, we'll, we'll figure something out. Tales of Earth Cast. Sure. I mean, that, that actually would work. Anyway, we, fill, <laughs> we stream this live after that every Monday. Um, this is also supported by our Patreon, patreon.com slash comic story, where for $2 you get access to this podcast, other podcasts, and early content on our channel. So, how are you doing today? Andy? I'm fantastic, Dan. I'm one year older now. Ah, Woke yes. up this morning, my hip had popped out and my back hurt. So, <laughs> how are you? You know, you know what? That doesn't shock me, and I don't think you're joking. Uh, <laughs> I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty darn good. So, let's <laughs> jump right on in. So, uh, this week, um, this is the comic week of January 8th. Uh, I figured I should start mentioning that so you know which week of comics we Does are talking sense. about. Yeah, yeah I never really thought um, about that. So, first up is The Amazing Mary Jane number four. Uh, so, this is still continuing the... She's working on a movie mm-hmm. with Mysterio. Mm-hmm. And honestly, it's just getting repetitive at this point. Fair every enough. Every issue has become, there's a problem... Mysterio almost goes Mysterio. Mary Jane stops him. Mary Jane fixes it. The villains are pissed that the movie's being made. That's pretty much every single issue so far. Okay. It's it's a pretty decent story. The art's not bad, Mm. but it definitely does have a very repetitive nature that I'm kind of like, okay, I get it. They don't want the movie being made. Right. Mary Jane's pretty much the one that's making the movie. Like, it's... We need to move past this. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Like at this point, finish up the movie, keep going. Give me a story yeah. that feels a little bit more exciting. Fair enough. Um, so that was the Amazing Mary Jane number four. Next up after that is Amazing Spider Man number thirty seven. I'm gonna quickly check which one this was. I did like this one actually because it directly references that Mary Jane is off doing uh, the Hollywood stuff right now. Right, right. So they have officially stated this is side-by-side side in okay. the timeline as The Amazing Mary Jane. Did you get a chance to read this one? No, I did not, no. Um, so this one, it's... I mean, it's kind of like a... Uh, he's just trying to figure out how to have a life while also being Spider-Man. So it's standard um, Spider-Man. It's standard Spider-Man, except he now has that device that... Uh, Miguel, I believe, Spider-Man 20. Miguel O'Hare. Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, he came back and gave to him the prediction kind of thing. Oh, right, yeah. And so yeah. he's trying to use it to uh, stop the fights before they start okay. so that he has more time to spend with Mary Jane, to sure. spend with Aunt May, and that kind of stuff. And we, it looks like we're also going in the direction of J. Jonah Jameson potentially moving back towards Spider-Man as a menace. Okay. So that that was a little bit hinted at, mm. but it does seem like that's going to become a bigger point. Um, so it will be interesting to see where this one goes. This issue felt a little low. Okay. Like it, it, it felt kind of slow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it definitely is the, hey, Spider-Man 2099 is done. Right. This is what stuck around. Now we're going to get into our new stuff. So that was Amazing Spider-Man number 37. Uh, next up on the list of comics is Batman number 86. Did you read this one? I did. So, because I, I read this one as well, okay. actually. So, this was obviously the first issue that Tinian has taken over. Yep. Tom King's run is done. Thank God. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so, we're kind of picking up where I guess where Tom King really left it off. Uh, Alfred is dead. Spoiler alert. Sorry. Um, We've definitely this never was, mentioned it. I, I don't know. As a, as a first issue, it wasn't terrible. Technically, it's not a first issue. It's yeah. it's 86. But as a first issue for a new writer, it wasn't terrible. I don't think it was... It wasn't what I expected from Tinian. I thought I was expecting a little bit more of a jump into it. Okay. Uh, and this, to me, felt more of like a build-up issue. Obviously, it's mm-hmm. setting up whatever is going on 
with whoever that hidden character was. You yeah. know, he was talking and the boss and yada, yada, yada. Um, so not a bad first issue, right. but not quite what I was expecting either. Okay. Because I, I actually enjoyed this one. Okay. Because, uh, as many of you know, I did not read the Tom King. Sure, I stopped yeah. so you at didn't the really, wedding. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I felt this one was really good because it immediately gives you the tone and mood true, of yes. how Batman is. It doesn't really reference that much of the city of Bane or all of that. Like there was a couple of things. Here there's and a couple there, little yeah. mentions, but nothing that made me go, Oh crap. I need to yeah, read yeah. the previous arcs to know what's going on. And I mean, the heart wrenching moment when he calls to Alfred that, that yes, part, yeah. I was like, okay, this, this has set the mood for kind of what, uh, James apparently Tynan uh, is going for right like I and I actually kind of enjoyed this. I feel like if you were not reading the Tom King and you have wanted no, no, to I get into I it, enjoyed it, definitely yeah. read it. I was gonna say I definitely enjoyed it more than I was enjoying Batman. Yeah, for the last eighty-five issues, but uh, no, no, I, I think up to fifty were okay. No, they weren't. I liked some um, of them. I was just, I don't know if I was expecting more out of mm -hmm. Tynan or what. I don't know. But, I mean, I did enjoy the issue. Right. But, yeah. I, feel, I feel like he wanted to do that, but it would have been such Too a much jump. of a jolt. Yeah. And so this yeah. one was kind of him going, okay, I'm going to try and transition from Tom King sure. to yeah, my style. Yeah. And I, I actually, if that is the case in the future issues, uh, start I would say going it was into, a good idea. Yeah. I think it would be yeah. a great idea. So. Uh, but overall, I did enjoy it this was, issue. Yes. yes. I, if you've been wanting to get back into Batman, this is the time. It is a good... Yeah, it is, this is the jumping on point. Yes. Um, all right. Next up is Batman and the Outsiders, number nine. I believe you've been following this yes. one. Yes. So uh, this issue picks up with... I, I want to say the previous issue came out during our break. I think so. Uh, so this issue picks up. Raza Ghul has killed a uh, friend of Black Lightning's. Okay. And now Black Lightning is pissed off. And wants to go kill Raza Ghoul. Okay. Batman shows up, but he's like, "We don't do that." Katana shows up and go, "We could do that." <laughs> it's kind of what this issue was. She, she's like, "Well, you don't." Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I got a sword. I mean, she pre <laughs> she pretty much says like, "Batman doesn't do that, but we could." I'm right. just saying. Um, they are the outsiders. They are the all. outsiders. Uh, this issue is basically it, it goes more into like the relationship between Black Lightning and Katana. Okay. Uh, setting them up as friends as they have been in previous issues. Uh, I thought that was really good. And it also kind of goes more into Duke and his new powers. Oh, and, that's right. Uh, I forgot he Cassandra got this. Cassandra Cain's, yeah. So, I mean, it wasn't like a huge action-packed issue. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was, I mean, it was a good issue. Jumping on spot or no? Uh, I would say you'd probably be a little confused because they're all dealing with what's been happening. This okay. is, I think, in the middle of the second arc. Okay. So I would say you'd probably be a little confused because we're like in the middle of stuff is happening. Right. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. So this, it, yeah. it looks like the last issue during our break would have been the jumping on point because this is uh, a league of their own part two. Yes. So. so, and then also like Superman shows up and they do address the Superman has revealed his identity to the world. Okay. Batman pretty much said he was stupid. Which it, he was. I mean, flat out was just like, he's like, I give it a month. Uh, something in terms of he's like, I give it a month and you're going to come to me for advice. Oh yeah, and Superman was like, no. <laughs> so I mean, it was a good issue. If you've been right, if you've been reading Outsiders, keep going. I've been enjoying it. Definitely not a jumping on issue. Right. I feel like you would be very confused though. All right. Uh, next up on our list is Black Cat number eight. Uh, so this one is continuing the style of Black Cat stealing from other heroes. In this case, uh, she goes to uh, Danny Rand's place. Okay. Um, and she's trying to essentially scan the, I'm going to call it the Rand portal because I can't remember what it's actually called. Uh, sure. But it's a giant machine in the building, and uh, everyone makes the joke of, well, how are you going to steal this? Like, uh, And she's like, I'm not. I'm transmitting the data. Right, yeah, 3D yeah, yeah, print this at home. Yeah, I was going to have to make uh, one. Yeah. <laughs> but it, uh, it was kind of funny when Danny Rand shows up because like, he – He's just laughing about it because he's like, you know what? Usually people try and like steal my kung fu style yeah, or like yeah, yeah, yeah. the essence, but a thief 
it's kind of a nice new turn. <laughs> um, but it was kind of a lull, a uh, little bit of a lull. She is dealing with uh, what's been happening in previous issues mm -hmm. of the Odessa Drake situation, the guild being against her. Um, we learn about her mother and like her mother's opinion on the Black Fox who has been training her. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a lot of stuff going on in this one. If you haven't been enjoying it, you're not going to enjoy it. If you have been, definitely keep reading. Like, no, It was a... It was a decent issue. Like, okay. I mean, I didn't hate it, but right. it definitely wasn't my top of the week. So, uh, Next up, if you have been excited or prepping for the Black Widow movie, I just want to let you know that the trade of Black Widow, Welcome to the Game, came out this week. Um, just in case you wanted to prep, I don't know uh, what the story is about because, I mean, I read a lot of comics and that one's like 140 pages. So I care. Um. Next up, we have Catwoman, number 19. I don't believe either of us have been reading that one. Yep. Um, I'm going to mention this just because it relates to a comic later on. The uh, trade paperback for Captain Marvel, Volume 4, Falling Star, came out this week. Oh, yeah. um, I'm mentioning that because later on there's something Star-related. Uh, next up is Conan Serpent War, number three of four. Yeah. How was this one? This is awesome. Okay, so Conan Serpent War brings together uh, three Robert E. Howard Ooh, characters. Jim's up. Sweet. Yes, written by Jim Zub. Uh, so it's got, obviously, Conan the Barbarian, which makes sense. He's on the title. Uh, you have Agnes the Black, who's like a 17th century French pirate woman. Okay. Uh, Looks kind of like a musketeer. Kind of, yeah. Uh, and you have Solomon Cain, who was a Puritan monster hunter. And Moon Knight. God, yeah. I wish I read this. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously, so the idea behind Moon Knight is he's the modern. So each one is from a different time frame. Uh, Moon Knight is the modern one. And he, you know, follows Khonshu, the Egyptian god, the moon mm -hmm. god there. So that's why he's in there too. So the idea is that this entity brought them together to fight the serpent gods. They beat the serpent gods, but then, shockingly, the entity is not as good as everyone thought. <gasps> I know. It's almost as if it's a normal thing in Conan the Barbarian stories. <laughs> uh, I think it's really good. It's a fun play off the characters who normally would not have ever met, like Conan the Barbarian, not generally time traveling unless you're in Marvel Comics now. Right. Um I love uh, I how much fun. they're using Jim it. Jim Zum has a lot of fun with it. He really knows the characters really well, and mm -hmm. I think they play off each other really well. Art's really good. Uh, this being the third of four issues, I would suggest getting one and two if you haven't, uh, because you will be I, not really confused, because if you know anything about the characters, they just kill things a lot. Right. But it helps for the story. All right. Uh, but yeah, I would definitely recommend this. Okay. Yeah, I've definitely... I've meant to read this one, yeah. but I keep forgetting. It's been so a fun I'll... series so far, yeah. All right. I want Jim Zub to do more Conan and the Barbarians because his, his two issue, or I think it was, no, his two issues on Savage Sword was really good. Mm -hmm. um, and this is really good. So hopefully he'll do He's more. very good with that uh, fantasy stuff. Yes. Yeah, like D&D, Sword and Sorcery, that sort of stuff. So, uh, All right. Next up, uh, Daphne Byron came out this week. It is part of the Hill House DC Black Label. Oh, no, I didn't. Um, yeah, I haven't read this one. We did not read this one, but yeah. I want to let you know if you've been interested in those DC kind of horror style comics. Right. Maybe check it out. Which, and let us know what I you will think. say Basket Full of Heads was very good. Um, was that this week? That was not this week. Oh, okay. Uh, I was all like, the three oh, series shit. that have come out so far. Oh, okay. Basket Full of Heads was very good. Dollhouse was okay. Okay. And there was a third one who I don't remember the name of now. I can't. That I did not like. The okay. first issue, first second issues were very slow, very dull. Um, but uh, Best of All Heads and Dollhouse have both been pretty good. All right. So let us know if you think this one's good. Yeah. Uh, next up, Deadpool number two came out. This is I continuing mean. on, I want to say, Kelly Thompson's run. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, so this is continuing Deadpool being the king of monsters mm -hmm. now. Um, we've got uh, Craven the Hunter's son. It was specifically stated from the uh, hunted storyline okay. where Craven died. They did specifically say... That they they make the comment of like, wait, didn't Craven die? And they're like, yeah, I think this is his son trying to live up to his dad or something. Like his son's nephew's former roommate or yeah. something. <laughs> Pretty uh, much. Um, but the, this one seems to be going a, a little all over the place. 
standard Deadpool style. Yeah. Um, but but is it also fun all over the place. It kind of is. Okay. Uh, so like Deadpool is trying to make Staten Island Monster Island and kind of a fun like tourist attraction he's like <laughs> okay who needs a boat ride when you've got a tentacle monster that can carry you across i mean and then wrong. it eats someone in the background and he's like guys we can't keep <laughs> eating people on camera uh <laughs> so it does, just specifies on camera yeah yeah um so we got that stuff i'm really liking what she's doing with uh jeff the baby land shark okay um like deadpool is very very much attached to him fantastic i really enjoy that bit um, I don't know exactly where she's going to be going with this. Okay. Um, but this definitely was not one of those issues where I'm like dreading the next issue. Sure, yeah. Um, yeah. So if you have been reading this one, check it out. Give it a look. Um, see what you think. The art is a very unique style. I will say that because it is a very unique style. Um, I believe it was the artist from the uh, from Doctor Strange a while back. Um, it oh, is, yeah, I think it was Jason Aaron's run on Doctor Strange. Yeah, I don't Chris the Bacalo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So give it a shot. Definitely worth reading. Um, I enjoyed it. So it's And it's only issue two, so if you have not caught up, very easy to. So uh, Next up on our list of uh, comics is Excalibur number five. So this uh, this one, we finally start to see kind of what Apocalypse was trying to do behind the scenes yeah. a little bit. Not fully, but we get a, the idea yeah, of a little bit more, he yeah. did manipulate things. I know, shocking, right? Um, yeah, yeah. Who Apocalypse? Who what? I it? Yeah, yeah. Um, not too much happened in this one, really, no, though. I mean, it was like, kind of a fight issue. But it was very action-y, like but... Panel yeah. at a time kind of thing. It wasn't even like big drawn-out fights, but yeah. I mean, it was okay. It was an alright issue. But uh, definitely... Not amazing. No. And no. Uh, speaking of not amazing, Fallen Angels number five came I out. I have this fallen week. off of this one and New Mutants so hard. I'm glad you read them. <laughs> <laughs> so, this one, uh, they explain the name of Fallen Angels. Okay. So, they essentially relate uh, Krakoa to heaven. Sure. And that the angels from heaven had fire, like flaming swords, that uh, Psylocke essentially uh, grew up through hell. Okay. And so they're like, well, we're the fallen angels. Sounds way too edgy. Uh, like, yeah, guys, we're so cool. We're going to call was, ourselves fallen angels. Yeah, I I really am not a fan of this. Uh, X-23 builds a team. Um, Is it like a force just of X? random people. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> force of X. Force of X. You can't um, use X-Force. It's already been used. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> um, but, it, I mean, the art was kind of iffy. Like, I just, I haven't been a fan of this yeah. one. Um, That's like, why I stopped reading them. Yeah. <laughs> it, I, honestly, if I didn't have to read this for the show, I wouldn't. Fair enough. I, I honestly would have been dropped off, even though it has one of my favorite characters, X-23, because of the fact that they've kind of ruined the character. I'm sorry. Bastard. Sorry, Brian Hill, but that's not my X-23. Hashtag not my X-23. Um, so uh, next up on the list after Fallen Angels number five is Ghost Rider number four. So continuing the Johnny Blaze is out of hell. Yes. Um, now and trying to get Mephisto. Yep. We, uh, he's trying to get Mephisto and then Danny Ketch had gone to limbo. this, uh, yes, to limbo to get Belasco's help, which, uh, Belasco being a devil tricks yeah, him. Not as helpful as you would assume. Um, and uh, we get a new character to fight against the spirit of vengeance. So is what the spirit of blue corruption. Corruption. I want to say. Okay, uh, which is cool. It's kind of a cool look. I still maintain. While well, I'm enjoying this story, mm -hmm. we will say that now. I still maintain nothing Johnny has done points me to he's being corrupted by being the king of hell yeah. I still what they're saying I said this last time mm -hmm. what there's what the other characters are saying how we gotta st stop Johnny help Johnny he's being corrupted by hell and what Johnny is doing don't really seem to be coinciding he's right. still hunting demons yep 
He's still trying to stop them from escaping hell. He did. Say, he did say that he feels like he's kind of going crazy because it felt like he's been in hell for centuries. Which I can understand that. He's if you're the pissed king of that hell. no one came to get him. Yeah, I get that. But yeah. like his actual, like he's not running around killing innocent people. Exactly. Yeah. He's not trying. To I mean, make excluding deals with the well, penance sure. stare. Well, yeah, but he didn't kill him. Um, yet. But that's my that's my only so far only problem with this series. Now I love yeah. the characters. I like the story they're telling. I like the art. But the only thing that doesn't make any sense to me is what they're actually saying versus what Johnny is doing. But yeah. saying that, this is a very good series. I, I, I am yeah, enjoying, I'm enjoying it. it. I believe this. I like Danny Ketch too because he was my Ghost Rider when I was a kid. Because um, okay. it was the 90s. I'm old. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, so we've got guaranteed at least two more issues. I don't know if this is a mini series. It doesn't say. I don't remember them saying it was going to be a mini series. Yeah, I, I heard it was going to be the new Ghost Rider series. So. Hopefully. I'm yeah. hoping. Um, so, I, I think yeah. it's worth checking out. Yeah, I, I would definitely say it. I yeah. did enjoy it. Um, next up after that is Ghost Spider number six. Um, this one was a filler issue. Mm -hmm. um, did you read it? I, I started to, and but it was like one of the last ones I was reading. Right. And I was just like, it doesn't seem to be a lot going on. I was like, I know Dan's going to read it. Yeah. So, yeah. So, essentially what's been going on is we finished, we pseudo finished up the previous arc. Yeah. Uh, this one, Gwen took uh, the Mary Janes to alternate universes to go to concerts for yeah, which, their favorite bands. I thought it was um, a really weird thing to do. <laughs> and well, I love that she stayed, she's like, you know, if, if, if taking like abusing my ability to go to different universes would make them like me more, I should have done this earlier. Yeah, well, I mean, realistically, um, that's what you probably would do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And they are setting up the next story arc that involves um, Johnny and Susan Storm from her version yes of her Johnny version Jesus. of earth 65 um and they're kind of like they're essentially super they're influencers yeah i was gonna say they're they instagram like models they're instagram influencers. Models. Yeah, yeah and uh they go to latveria they disappear no one knows what happened and it looks like that's going to be related to the upcoming mm. story arc so might be worth checking out um if you have been enjoying ghost spider but this definitely would not grab you if you're unsure about it. Yeah. So, uh, next up on the list is Gotham City Monsters number five. I believe you did not read this one, apparently, but it did come out. Did I don't remember seeing it. I don't know if uh, Benny bought it or not because I don't actually log oh, in. Oh, maybe he didn't buy it then. Because I, I generally see the ones that are bought, and that's what I go off of. I right. don't really usually look through them all. Because uh, so, I did not read this one. But it came out. Man. Check it out. I'll have to read it tonight. Um, Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy number five came out. So, still enjoying the series. Uh, they're still sort of figuring out. Cause, so, Harley still wants to be a superhero. She's decided. Uh, Ivy has Ooh. decided she will also be a superhero. Okay. And this one, they have traveled back to New York City to fight the Floridian man who was trying to take over as, like, the champion of the green or whatever it is. Oh, the flower dude? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, they run into Batwoman. And uh, Harley's like, no, no, we're good guys now. And is there like a union we can join? That sort of stuff. Uh, it was a fun issue. Uh, okay. It was mostly fights. And then the whole Batwoman doesn't believe that they're trying to be superheroes and they are trying to be superheroes. And then, you know, that sort of thing. Right. So, I mean, this was, I, I want to say we're like one issue away from the Yes. The this is this. number five of a six issue miniseries. Yeah. So, um, I mean, it wasn't a bad issue, but this is this is definitely just trying to get us to the finish line kind of thing. Okay. But I've enjoyed the series as a whole. I like the, you know, the relationship between Harley and Ivy is really fun. And, you know, Harley trying to be all, well, Harley and <laughs> Poison Ivy not being that way. Right. And, you know, she's still in her kind of weird phase where we're not sure what's going on with her after uh, Heroes in Crisis. So I, I enjoyed this if you like both characters. All right. Yeah. That was uh, Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy number five. Next up on our list is Hawkman number 20. Uh, this is continuing the fact that Sky Tyrant yes. is the main person. We learned that it was an infection. Um, that, okay. So the Joker... Did you not read this one? I didn't read this one. No, oh, okay, actually, so yeah. the Joker who laughs reveals that he did he nick did him. He did infect him. Okay. He, so he nicked him with uh, one of the infected blades, and he did it before everyone else... Because he knew that the nth metal and like his biology was going to fight off the infection, 
but it could only fight it off for so long. Sure, yeah. Um, we also Which explains why he just randomly showed up. Exactly. And we're like, what the hell? And so uh, Sky Tyrant is going through the uh, Black Journal mm -hmm. that all the Hawkmen have been writing in to essentially write down all of history. Right. And so it seems to be we're going in the direction of he wants to just kill millions so that they will can constantly be reincarnated. Okay. And uh, Hawk Woman is currently trying to gather allies to try and break him out of this. So she's like talking to the Atom. Um, I actually don't recognize the person that she saw at the end, but it definitely seems like it's a internal struggle of Carter and Sky Tyrant, of Sky Tyrant trying to get the ancient history that will allow him to do pretty much whatever he wants. Right. And Hawkwoman gathering friends of Carter Hall to break him out of it. Okay. So uh, it's not bad, though. I, I actually am kind of enjoying this now that it seems to be picking up a little bit. Right, yeah, I was going to say, it was, was slowing slow. it down for a minute yeah. there, yeah. But it feels like they're finally starting up a new story arc. Um, I kind of hope that they reference why it's Hawk Woman and not Hawk... Is it Hawk Girl or Hawk Woman that's in uh, the Justice League? In Justice League, it's Hawk Girl. It is Hawk Girl. Okay, yeah. I to for some knowledge. reason in my head, I thought it was Hawk Woman and both, which wouldn't make sense. But if it's Hawk Woman and Hawk Girl, it would make sense how both could exist. Yeah, in, like in some way. The, um, the, it is two different versions of the character. Cause yes, one is a version that it was because in the nineties they made the they made the one that was actually from Thanagar yep. versus the one that was uh, the reincarnation, which is I believe the one in Justice League right now. Yes. I believe they call her Hawk Girl. I don't think okay. they call her Hawk Woman. I think they were calling the Thanagarian I think it, I one think it was Hawk, uh, Woman. Hawk Girl as yeah. well. Um, Could be wrong. So too I'm, many Hawk people. Yeah, way too many. I do hope that at some point they reference that yes. and kind of explain it because that is confusing with Hawk Girl being a very incredibly important character right. in the Justice yes, League yeah. right now. So how she just randomly showed up. Yeah. Exactly. So it'll be interesting. Uh if you have been wanting to jump back in, this might be actually a decent spot. Um I would actually recommend the previous issue so you can get the start of Sky Tyrant. Yeah. Um but that being said, all you kind of really need to know is Sky Tyrant's here and they got away. That's I mean that's really all you need to know. Right. So. Yeah. Um, and that Sky was Tyrant is an evil Hawkman. Yes, he's from the uh, Crime Syndicate universe, I believe. I believe so. Yeah. So uh, that is Hawkman number twenty. Hawkman. Uh, next up, Immortal Hulk number twenty nine. Uh, this one seems to be kind of interesting. So Roxon has learned that Hulk can be the Hulk in the day, despite being usually at night. Yeah. We start going a little bit more into. Uh, the psychology behind why this is okay because Banner's more cooperating with mm. the different personalities in his head. Uh, and Roxon, I guess, is trying to make him look like a hero. Yeah, I don't. It seems like a weird. I was enjoying plan. this series, but the last couple issues, I, I, I don't know. I kind of. They've been slow. They're losing me. Yeah, they're losing me. And I was, I was really enjoying the whole like the possessed kind of version of the Hulk and it was, everything was more monstrous and things like that. Right. And these last two ones with like rocks on and things like that have been kind of fallen off. Yeah. It's cause I read this and I was just kind of bored. Yeah. I, yeah. I feel like they're kind of going away from that creepiness that right, immortal yeah, Hulk yeah. was. So we'll, we'll see where it goes. Cause I, I mean, this is the transition. That is so true, they're yeah. building up for what is kind of going to be the status quo, I guess. Yeah, that's true. Uh, so that'll be hopefully but nice when we get yeah. to it, but it's just, if you're tight on the issues, budget, yeah. I would say wait until that yeah, future issue. Say, yeah. So, uh, next up on our list is magnificent. Miss Marvel. Number 11. Uh, this one, we have uh, Kamala Khan fighting against the Stormbringer, I believe is the name that they gave the suit. Uh, sorry, Storm Ranger, um, which ah, if my you... my favorite Power Ranger. Exactly. Um, if you read uh, the previous issues where she went to that alien planet, it was some sort of Kree suit that she was using. All right. Turns yeah. out it is uh, evil and what? wants to kill the villain, like eliminate... Uh, this is why you yeah, never man. pick up a new suit in space. Yeah. Did no one learn from Spider-Man? Especially when you're Kree. Uh, <laughs> they tend to be a little bit evil um, and a little bit violent, too. So 
this really was pretty much an entire issue of her versus the suit, though. Okay. Um, so it, it'll be interesting to see where it goes, but like, I, I don't feel like anything really happened in this issue. Fair enough. All, all that happened is she fights the suit. She learns that it truly is evil. So it turns out the suit was um, the friends we made along the way. <laughs> Sorry, keep going. Uh, next up, uh, neither of us read this because we actually didn't buy it, but I want to let you know. Uh, a new Gamerverse comic came out this week. Marvel Avengers Thor number one. Oh, I think I so, saw it, but I didn't see I it. I saw it. It wasn't bought, so I kind of skipped yeah. over it because I had a lot of other comics to read. But did come out. If you're interested in playing the Avengers game and you kind of want to know what uh, Thor is going to be doing leading up to it, this is the comic line for that. Hitting things with a hammer. That generally is usually it. So. Uh, Marvel's of uh, Marvel's X number one of six came out. I actually did not read this one, uh, mostly because there was a scroll on the cover, and I just didn't care that much. That's fair. I mean, I I'm not that interested in scrolls. Um, the art looks Me? interesting. Like, uh, it's not horrible, yeah. but it's definitely not amazing. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I I honestly don't know what this one is about. Uh, I'll, I'll read the synopsis, I guess. David has a problem. He lives in a world of monsters that would love to devour him. He's the sure. last boy on Earth, the last human being on Earth, and these creatures that see him only as prey, their former neighbors, he has one hope to get to New York, uh, to get where Captain America and the rest of the heroes are. Uh, this is written by a and, um, Alex Ross and Jim Kruger um, with the art of well be. So, okay. um, this, oh, uh, to tell a very uncanny prequel to the legendary Earth X trilogy. Oh, okay. So I don't right. know if you're I aware of that. I have read the Earth X trilogy, yes. Okay, so if you're interested in the prequel to that trilogy, Marvel's X. I didn't even know they were doing that. Okay. So, Maybe I'll take uh, it I feel like it did not have any publicity and... Yeah, I was going to say, I didn't, I didn't remember seeing anything about it. I didn't even know it was a thing. Yeah, so... And Mar Earth X was like the 90s. Yeah, I believe. That yeah, was it was like, a uh, lot older. That was like a um, not a post-apocalypse, but it was kind of like the, it was a, a really dark future for the Marvel universe. Like pretty much everything went to hell, kind of thing. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, that did come out. If you are interested, uh, another comic that came out that we did not read: Mighty Morphin Power Rangers and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number two came out this week. Check it out if you're interested. They morph and eat pizza. I assume. It's kind of what I do. Yeah, that's true. I, I eat pizza and then more <laughs> to a blob. I'm a blob. I'm just a blob now. Uh, <laughs> all right. So next up that is Miles Morales: The End, number one. I don't know why they numbered it number one because it does conclude. So it's kind of weird. Uh, but I will say right off the bat, I did not like the art at all in this comic. It was very goofy. And not they my look very style. Very cartoony. Very cartoony. Yeah, but not like the type of cartoony I like, which is like it leans into the cartoony, but it's still sort of serious at the same time. Yeah. And uh, to kind of give an idea of what the universe is like, it felt very much like Oblivion Song. Of okay. A very like so these germs are have taken over the world. There's a couple safe havens throughout the world, and. Uh, Miles is an older man and is protecting Brooklyn. That okay. is encased in a bubble that prevents the germs from getting through. Uh, the germs just look like giant creepy monsters. And I mean, it was an okay story, but. Can you get past the art? <sighs> it, I, it was yeah. very hard to get past the yeah. art. And it's, it's one of those ones where it's got a moral to the story oh, of like, nice. even in the worst of times, you got to make sure you have fun when you can. Sure. Because, like, he pr he saves these people that are trapped in the outer world. Right. Yeah. And then when he brings them into Brooklyn where everything is good, um, like, he's he's excited to let this kid finally play. Right. And like, yeah. so, um, okay. I mean, it's interesting, but, I mean, it really was nothing amazing. Right, right. And the art, it's hard to get past. If you're okay with the art style, you might like it, but... The art is hard to get past. So. Right. Fair uh, next up, Morbius number three came out, uh, as well as the Morbius movie trailer. Just letting you know. Uh, I don't think either of us read that one. I have not read been reading it so. now. 
Uh, next up after that is New Mutants number five. I am really disliking this uh, comic because of the fact that it started off with the mutants in space, <laughs> then went to a story arc of the bird mutants on a farm in the middle of Nebraska or something like that, and now we're back to the mutants in space. Here is my the reason why I do not like this. We had four pages to remind you of why they're in space and every, like all that kind of stuff. You could have just continued the story and not swapped to a completely different group of people. It's not like you're short on X-Men comics right now. Uh, we are. There's only like 18 of them. But it... What issue is this for New Moon? This is number five. Oh, wow. Okay. So it is the start slash continuation of the previous one of them in space where they are protecting, I believe, uh, Deathbird, who okay. they are taking back to some space empire, the Shi'ar, I believe, that and, is the, uh, the big Marvel or the X Men one. So. Yep. Uh, yeah. yeah, the Shi'ar Galaxy, and uh, they are essentially going to get attacked because obviously the Shi'ar are like, no, we don't want her. Right. Yeah. But they're like, no, we need to give you her, and so it's <laughs> you take the baby. No, I know it's not a baby. But. It's it's. It frustrates me because if this was one just complete story, sure, if they had yeah, not yeah. done the bird people on the farm, I actually think I would be enjoying this. Right, yeah. But the fact the that they got me excited and then dropped and gave me some people, and I'm like, Ugh. How long was the, how many issues was the people on the farm thing? I want to say two. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it's, it's, that's a decent Like, it amount. wasn't yeah. even a complete story, really. Yeah. Like, it just didn't really make sense for it to be in the New Mutants. And with the fact that they are new mutants and the lesser known, it makes even less sense because they're like, hey, we want to tell you about these 5,800 different mutants. Yeah. And we're going to jump around the whole time. So uh, definitely not my favorite uh, X-Men book <laughs> of uh, the week. So, uh, And speaking of Oblivion Song, Oblivion Song number 23 came out this week. Just oh, so you guys right. know. 23 issues? Uh, yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. Crazy, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, next up after that one that I believe both of us enjoyed Rick and Morty versus Dungeons and Dragons 2 yeah. issue number four Painscape yeah very good I mean it, it wasn't was as ending. good as the original no it's the, this, um, this series was not as good as the original series it was still fun though it was very fun um, you get to see kind of Rick what he's been doing you get to see what everything else is happening outside and the best part they leave it very open for a sequel because Rick has a ring with see, one <laughs> wish one and he's like wish. it's called foreshadowing bitches <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna make a trilogy out of this thing <laughs> Uh, so. Yeah, I did. I did enjoy it for what it was. I definitely, like I said, enjoyed the first one better, more. Mm -hmm. um, but this one was also a lot of fun, and, I, and I'll probably check out the third one. I honestly think the third one will be as good, if not better, than the first. Okay, because I feel like this one was him trying to almost rush a story that he wasn't expecting to get. I could see that. And yeah, so I yeah. think now that he has the prep to go into yeah. a potential third, I think we would get something a lot I could see that. better. Um, especially since they're starting a new campaign led by Morty. So yeah, it'll that's, be see, with a bunch of very when, interesting when races. That, I was like, oh, that'll be fun to yeah. do something with Morty as the DM next time. I think that would be a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, I think, I think it'll be nice because it'll give them an idea of using what's been happening, but a significant twist right, that yeah. allows him to almost replicate some of the stuff they've already done, yeah. but in a Morty manner. Yeah. So definitely worth reading. Um, I think this uh, mini series, it's only four issues, definitely worth picking up. And yeah. if you have not read the first one, even Do more it. worth picking up. So Do it. Do it. Do it. Uh, all right. Uh, Ruins of Ravencroft number one came out this week. Um, actually kind of cool. Did you read this one? I, I did. I think I read it earlier in the week, though. Okay, so this I one... I uh, it. And now I'm trying to remember what actually happened to it. So they go, uh, F, if you had been reading Absolute Carnage. Right. Uh, the Ravencroft Institute got destroyed. Right. So now they are rebuilding it. Misty Knight shows up. Uh, John Jameson shows yes. up. And Wilson Fisk shows up. And Mr. Fantastic shows up. And we Maybe get the history it. behind Ravencroft. Okay. So we get the history behind why the Institute was put here, what happened. It turned out the area of Ravencroft, nothing grew. 
and had a group of indigenous people that would just, they were cannibals. Sure. And uh, yeah. like no one wanted to go to this area. Very clear. They're part of the cult of carnage. Mm. Of uh, They worship Null. And we go into all of that. We learn that the very first person uh, hospitalized at Ravencroft was one of Cletus Cassidy's old, old relatives. Oh, it was a Cassidy. Okay. So, you know, what? I don't think I did read this book. It's actually pretty good. Yeah. I mean, not too much happens, but it was really but it's cool. it's a history of Ravencroft. Yeah, yeah, yeah it yeah. was really cool getting the history of Ravencroft, kind of seeing how they're implementing all of this into the universe mm. with Null, uh, like the cult, like all of that stuff. It seems actually pretty cool. I'm excited to read this. Uh, if you were interested in Ravencroft, in the almost origin of the religion of Carnage and Null, definitely worth picking up. Nice. Um, but if you don't like those slower, more talkative issues, right, yeah. not going to be for you. So, uh, But I think you would very much enjoy it. I'll check out. I think I maybe I opened it and then for some reason didn't get an extra year around to reading it. It look, Honestly, I think you started it and didn't finish it because... It was partially read okay, when I Okay, maybe I it. got interrupted or something and then just not yeah. got, didn't get back to it. Um, all right, so next up is Savage Avengers number nine. Now, I did not read this one, but you did. I did. So uh, tell us about so it. So I have been, after that first arc that I kind of eh, fell off of, I have been enjoying Conan's Wacky Adventures in the Marvel Universe. Right. Um, this one sees him and uh, Doctor Doom and Stephen Strange yep. fighting against Kulathon. Okay. Um, kind of thing, and it's the same thing where like Kulan Goth. Kulan Goth. Thank you. Uh, they're like, you know, they're doing the whole stand back, barbarian. We've got this, and he's like, stupid wizards, and he's just attacking. <laughs> um, this was, yeah, this was kind of a continuation. Uh, I don't believe they ended up finishing it. I want to say because they sort of kill him, but then it doesn't really work. Kind of thing. Okay. Um, so yeah, this was this is I'm enjoying. I did not think I was going to enjoy when they first announced it. Conan the Barbarian and Marvel and modern Marvel. I was like, eh, it's going to be kind of dumb, but I have been enjoying it because he's been Conan the Barbarian. He yeah. hasn't been like Marvel's. Conan. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I would say I, I'm surprised you didn't read it. Cause we have, I, both I even downloaded this. it. My, yeah. So when I download it on my tablet, for some reason in the recent downloads, it'll put half my comics at the top and half at the very That's bottom. Weird. Yeah. And like, sometimes I just miss them. Cause I'm like, Oh, that was last week. Yeah. 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 Um, but, but yeah, uh, a fun issue. for the record, uh, this was the penultimate of the arc. Okay. It will conclude in okay. issue two. Yeah. I was going to say, I don't remember them actually ending it. So, yeah. Uh, so. and seeing him versus <laughs> Dr. Doom is always funny because I, it, it does. That was funny. I did yeah, enjoy yeah. the interactions between yeah. them. So I it's, am sad. It's still very much going along those lines. Okay. So yeah, I'll have to check this one out myself. The best part is at one point they're like, you know, Dr. Doom's throwing magic and Steam Strain's throwing magic. And cool, cool and goth is throwing magic, and and they're like telling Conan, and then Conan just runs over and stabs him in the head, and he's like, "That's how you kill a wizard." <laughs> it's like, okay, I mean, it's not good wrong, point, man. I guess. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, so next up, the reason why I mentioned Captain Marvel Volume Two, uh, Fallen Star. Star number one of five came out this week. Uh, so Star was the. Uh, the new character, I won't say hero, I won't really say yeah, villain, yeah. that came out out of that Captain Marvel story. Um, Captain Marvel punched a hole in her chest to essentially kill her and rip out the device that's uh, absorbing everyone's power. And uh, at the end of that, we learned that Star got infused with the Reality Stone. Okay. Similar to when that prisoner got the Time Stone uh, and Wolverine and Loki went to get him, essentially. Mm -hmm. Um, guess who goes to get Star? Loki. Um, that dude's throwing up everywhere. Isn't he supposed to be ruling someplace right now? And so, yeah. <laughs> well, actually, she says that in this. She's like, you think I'm going to believe you? Loki, king of the, uh, like, uh, yeah, yeah, god yeah. of lies. And yeah. he's like, I go by king of the frost giants now. Yeah, yeah I was going to say. Yeah. Um, but it definitely seems like Star's going in a pseudo-villainistic path. Okay. Uh, because she tries to permanently kill Loki. Okay. Um, and we're realizing, despite how powerful the reality stone is, she does not know how to use it in any manner. Sure. I uh, mean, yeah. So, like, she goes to Jessica Jessica Jones, 
and is like, hey, I, I need you to figure out who's trying to kill me. To which her reaction is, do you really think I'm going to help you? You tried to kill one of my best friends. Yeah. And her response was, no, 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 no. That's the other Jessica. She's like, we share her. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but we learned through that that she doesn't know how to do it because she tries to manipulate Jessica Jones being like, the most important thing you want to do is help me. And then Jessica Jones smashes her in the head and she's like, yeah, but I really want to do other stuff too. And like, you don't know how to do this. And of yeah, all people yeah. to try and mind control, I was not the one. To yeah, do. probably um, not the best plan. So it definitely seems like this could go in an interesting direction. Okay. Um, I don't know what exactly they're going to do, but I actually am excited to read this one. Okay. So if you were interested, if you liked the character during the Captain Marvel story, check it out. Uh, it is only a five issue miniseries at the moment. So, uh, next up on our list is Star Wars, the rise of Kylo Ren, number two of four. How was this one? And this one. Luke Skywalker kicks the crap out of the Knights of Ren. Ah, oh, yeah. This is essentially what this issue is. Right. Um, this is this. So the idea of this series is it is the uh, rise of Kylo Ren. So it's 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 showing us Ben Solo going from a Jedi apprentice, Jedi Knight. I guess he could technically be. I don't remember what they were supposed to be. Okay. Um, to becoming Kylo Ren. And so he goes, he's talking to Snoke and he's, you know, talking about how he wants to try to join the Knights of Ren. And then we get a flashback to when him and Luke Skywalker, uh, I want to say Ben is probably like 12 or 13 at the time. They go to like an ancient Jedi temple because mm -hmm. uh, Luke is trying to find history of the Jedi and things like that because he's the last remaining Jedi. Right. And they run into the Knights of Ren who at this time are just like marauders. Um, and basically Luke Skywalker kicks the crap out of them. Uh, As you would and expect. there's seven of them, I think, and he beats them all. Something like that. I, I did not know that one of them actually had a lightsaber. Yes. So he does not appear in any of the movies, so I assume this will yeah. also be part of his history. Um, it's an interesting theory. It's an interesting series so far, uh, especially if you're kind of... Because we don't really know that whole time period in the new Star Wars canon. Right. So if you're interested in that, it's it's been pretty good so far. I wonder if this is... I'm not sure if they did in the movies because I don't remember it, but mm. I didn't see the middle one. I wonder if they'll uh, do the origin of his lightsaber and if it is that guy's lightsaber. And sh that's it how not he, that guy's lightsaber. It is not. Okay. I will say that. Um, it's possible they will do the origin of him creating his... His, uh, Cause I am actually interested to why yeah. he made it the way he did. But, and, and this has dealt with a lot of like ancient Jedi stuff, which supposedly his lightsaber was based off of ancient Jedi model. So it's possible. Okay. Yeah. All right. But, uh, so yeah, that was star yeah. Wars, the rise of Kylo Ren number two of four. Um, uh, stranger things into the fire. Number one came out. So if you enjoy those stranger things, comics, Maybe check this one out. Uh, obviously, we didn't read it. Nope. Otherwise, I would tell you about it. Yep. Uh, Strike Force number five came out this week. Um, I fell off this one. Yeah, it's, I enjoyed. It's it very beginning. mediocre. Yeah, yeah. It, know. it's mediocre in my opinion, and it's stretching out. <sighs> it's kind of stretching out the story a little yeah. bit because, yeah. like, the whole the Vridai. I mean, it made sense a little bit, yeah. but now they're like a subplot, yeah. and we've got this character named ghost that's hacking uh monica rambeau the it, it's a whole weird thing it, it seems like we're going to be going into a lot of necromancy stuff of yeah. like raising people from the dead me i it's it's weird yeah, it's weird. I, yeah you, I at first i was kind of like okay this would be fun i like blade I like winter soldier I like monica rambeau I like you know spider woman blah, blah. and then it's just kind of like eh, this doesn't really seem to be doing anything. it's losing me yeah it, it's definitely losing me that's for sure um, next up on our list is Supergirl number 38, which the cover depicts, uh, infected Supergirl fighting Wonder Woman. Did you read this I one? I did not. Did you? I did not. Oh. Uh, but it looks like Wonder Woman's going to be fighting, uh, infected, infected Supergirl. Supergirl. So there you go. Uh, next up is Symbiote Spider-Man alien reality number two of five. This was a fun one. This was a fun yeah, one. I enjoyed this one. one. Yeah, I'll yeah. let you talk about this one. Uh, so this one in the first issue, Spider-Man in the symbiote costume, because this is supposed to split, take place during the that first time. The he first had time he yep. has the symbiote costume. So when they just think um, it's an alien, 
or they they don't they even don't know it's a, it was an alien yeah. at that time. It was just like, oh, cool, look at this new high tech suit I have, kind of thing. Yeah. Um. So in the first issue, he's fighting Hobgoblin. No, he was fighting Craven. That's right. He was fighting Craven. Uh, and then the suit kind of takes over because mm-hmm. he got kind of knocked unconscious, but the suit's defending itself. And then suddenly he wakes up in an alternate reality where a uh, hobgoblin is the sorcerer supreme. And then at the end of that, he gets saved by Stephen Strange, who's and, a homeless person, who's a homeless guy. Uh, so this one basically picks up right at the end, and uh, basically Stephen Strange is explaining how they kind of got to this weird alternate reality, mm-hmm. why he still remembers. Uh, why Spider-Man also still remembers and then uh, he's basically like listen if we're gonna change this I need to make you a sorcerer yes and Spider-Man's like wait wait no Uh, but then he kind of does a little like uh, whatever to me like if you're in an alternate reality and like this former Sorcerer Supreme is like listen we need to teach you how to use magic so we can fight this Mm -hmm. To me, you should be like, okay, let's do this. Right. But Peter instead decides to go see Aunt May because he's like, well, because he missed, he's like, he missed breakfast in I know, the but previous he's just like, one. He's like basically like, okay, but give me like an hour. Yeah. I'm going to go see Aunt May, um, which actually turned into a fun thing because, spoiler alert, Uncle Ben's alive in this reality. <gasps> um, but then, spoiler alert, things go very Spider Man y <laughs> in that things go badly. Uh, and in the end, Spider-Man goes back to Stephen Strange and is like, all right, teach me everything you need. Yeah. yeah. This is a really fun series so far. I really enjoyed the first uh, one they did, the symbiote Spider-Man, mm-hmm. so I've been enjoying this one. Uh, me too. Yeah. I, I the art's really good. The art writing is really good, yeah. Yeah, definitely worth picking up. Plus, it's a mini series, so you don't really have to worry about too Even much. Even if it sucks. Yeah. Uh, all right. So uh, speaking of the dollhouse from before, uh, the Dollhouse Family number three came out yes. this week. I did not read this one yet. Okay. I don't know if Ben bought it. I do not know. I don't that. think he did. And I forgot to pick it up when I went and picked up my comics. So. All right. But it did come out if you have been following that story. The first two issues were pretty good. Not not gr- not amazing. Like to me, the of the the horror comics, uh, Basketball Head is probably the best. Okay. But this one wasn't bad. All right. Uh, next up, Venom 22 came out this week. I did not read this one. I don't remember uh, seeing it. But it is... Oh, no. I read this one. Yeah. This one is when he goes all predator. It's on Venom Island. Yes. Part two. Brock is on an island that apparently he was on some point with the symbiote. I don't remember that from Venom history. The, okay. Well, they make it sound like he was in the past. I'm getting word from the gods over in the corner. Um, so, uh, the carnage symbiote, which has sort of taken over a little bit of the venom symbiote or mm-hmm. like is, is they've merged a kinda, little bit. Well, cause at the end of the whole, uh, absolute, absolute carnage, carnage thing, they all merged. Um, so there's a little bit of carnage in there now that's kind of driving the symbiote crazy. So Brock has stashed away military items and goes full Arnold Schwarzenegger. We're talking Arnold Schwarzenegger and predator or commando. <laughs> Uh, it's got a flamethrower, Bowie knife, bow and arrow, and is going to fight the Carnage symbiote. Love it. It is pretty cool. Not gonna lie, it is. It's straight up an '80s action movie. Is what this issue was. Okay. So yeah, I enjoyed it. <laughs> All right. '80s action movies though. I might. I so, might have to check this yeah, one out yeah. then. Uh, so that's uh, Venom number twenty-two. Uh, last one that we read this week is X Force number five. Um, this was a good issue. It was okay. Yeah. It's probably not my favorite of the issues that have come out so far. I felt the art was really weird. The art was very not weird. Bad, am, but it got weird. Am I the only one that is starting to dislike the fact that them dying doesn't mean anything? A little bit. Because Quentin Quire got his head blown off. And he's fine. He's coming back. Well, see, but I understand... I understand Because they're setting it up as a thing, like, well, we don't have to worry about death anymore, and then they'll probably take it away. Oh, they will. Which is, that may make sense. Yeah. So we're still in the in the period where they're like, whatever, it's cool. Exactly. And I, I feel like it kind of, it, it detracts from the intensity of the situation. Sure, yeah. Because yeah. if we weren't aware of the resurrection stuff, we would be like, oh my God, they we're just dead. killed an, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. one You're of like, the most nah, powerful psychics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then we've also got Domino that for some reason has a glowing eye. Like yeah. Cable I feel style. like we, I missed an issue there. I, 
I ha it must be related to the fact that uh, the weaponry that they are using is Krakoan Maybe, biological yeah. material that just reacts to the way that they want it to react. Yeah, acts, yeah. Um, but, I mean, it, it's a fun story. Uh, I don't know why they keep making Beast look like the cookie monster. Um, <laughs> every time that they go to him and he's got his glasses, yeah. he looks like the cookie monster. I didn't think about that. <laughs> yeah. Now that I've said it, you are I'm not so going to unsee it. Yeah, man. Um, Thanks a lot. <laughs> oh. uh, but, I mean, it seems like it could be going in an interesting direction yeah. once the, they've solidified the Yeah, this, initial... is, this is probably the first issue that I've been like, meh. Whereas I've enjoyed most of them up to this point. So, I'm, you know, I'm not going to fall off of you just yet. So Right. Yeah, I'll definitely keep reading. Yeah. Um, but then uh, two other comics came out, but we did not read these. Yondu, number four of five, came out, if you've been following that one. As well as Young Justice, number 12. Uh, I did not read it because, honestly, I disliked them bringing in Naomi last time so much that I just did not want to buy this and read it. So Fair enough. Uh, that brings us to the end of today's episode or this week's episode mm. of Comic Story and Weekly. Thank you guys so much for listening and watching. Uh, we do stream this live every Monday, twitch.tv slash comic after we record the podcast formerly known as the Conspiracy Cast at 2 p.m. Eastern. Yes. Uh, you can also get it on our Patreon, patreon.com slash comic story, where for $2 you get access to this podcast, many other podcasts, and early content on the channel. If you want to find more of Andy, he is on Instagram at 4 Andy. If you want to find more of me, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Danty Producer or on Twitch at Danty Streamer. Thank you guys so much for listening and watching, and we will see you next time.